Hey y'all, this is Joe from St. Bernard Acres. This is Sunday, um, August 16th. Got out here yesterday. Uh, I got out here before my wife. And uh, we spent the night out here, which was cool. But what was not cool was I, when I got here, come down to the barn because I wanted to get the generator out do a little work and the barn was all locked up and I opened these doors looked in and uh, I noticed that that door right there was open and we always keep that locked but my big doors with padlock on them they were still closed and locked and I looked around my generator is in that cart so that we can wheel it in and out of here pretty easily because it's heavy and guess what it's gone and my brand new chainsaw that was sitting over there, gone. <laughs> uh, the weed eater, the Troy Belt weed eater that was basically in pieces. Uh, they took all the pieces to it and it's gone. Uh, my camp stove they took. The brush hog attachment to the weed eater is gone. And they left the solar panels. They left most of the tools. Um, so I was like, damn, they got in here. So then it's like, let's figure out how they got in because they didn't come in through the door. And the first thing I did was go get the SD card out of the trail cam, which is sitting up there by the bird feeders. Because we wanted to see what was getting into the bird feeders. And on a tree right back there sits the trail cam. And there's our driveway coming down here. So I went and got the trail cam, put it in the laptop, and got nothing and I'm like how the hell is that possible and I know it's working because I got me driving in when I got here yesterday it had that and me walking up to it to get the card out of it so I know it was working and uh, I'm like how the hell did they do this and not get caught uh, I caught a four-wheeler on there, and I was telling my neighbor Bobby that <coughs> I got him, you know, on a blue four wheeler. So I was going to post that picture all over Craigslist and Facebook and all this kind of shit. Uh, and when Bobby came over, <laughs> it was his son who was riding around on the four wheeler. So it wasn't him who took it, or, you know, who did it. But we were trying to figure out how they did it, because that, that generator is so heavy. Uh, now you notice, this board's broken off now. It was loose and swinging, but it's completely broken off. And right down there is a block that they might have hopped up here, you know, jumped up, pulled themselves up into the top of the barn. Uh, didn't take my ladder. I don't know why. The brand new 24 foot extension ladder. Didn't take the John Deere mower. Um, but they, Evidently, the only thing we can figure is they came up this way, found that door over there, and took the stuff down the steps. 
Now maybe they couldn't get figure out how to get that ladder around and turned and down those steps. Uh, they never messed with the house, never went up near the house. Uh, Bobby has signs all over his property. He's got CCTV and maybe they thought this place was wired too. That's why they didn't bother going through the front or coming up the driveway, you know. So we were trying to figure out how the hell they got the stuff out of here and not get caught on the trail cam. And if you bear with me, we will. We came down here around the side of the barn. Because I could see their tracks at the bottom of the steps. So I could see footprints all around the bottom of the steps. And this being spread open now where it wasn't before. Uh, we had this all kind of blocked up. But they left the lawnmowers because they're chained up. But they came down those steps right there. And we look out here and it's like, what the heck flattened that out? You know, it's not big enough for a four-wheeler but it's bigger than a deer trail. So, you can see where it's been tramped down. And we, I started walking down through there, following that little trail, and got down about, I don't know, 15 feet. And it flattens out down there. And I'm like, what the hell is sitting down there? And leaning up against the tree down there was our camp stove. They left it down there. Uh, and I'm like, where the hell did they go with it? Because this goes way down into a valley and all the way back up the other side to a road on the other side of the property. So we took the, you could not carry a generator that far. It's just not possible to go through this thickets and these bush. This, I mean, it's all thorns. My arms are all cut up uh, from going through this stuff. But we walked all the way down through there to see if they dropped any more stuff and all the way back up to the road over there. And then walking around the road, we had to come all the way around the property back up to the driveway. And if you will bear with me, We'll walk over there and I'll show you what we found. Oh yeah, and to top it off, last night Gail went down to the store, headed down to the store. And guess what? Nothing like a good old flat tire to finish out the night. <laughs> so... That's got to be fixed. But I'm like, why the hell didn't we catch anything on the trail cam? Because even if they were on four wheelers, they had to go by here. And if they'd seen the trail cam, I'm sure what any good thief would do, you can't take it but that's just a plastic housing around it so you bust that and take the card out of it and I don't have it closed back up or anything yet that's why it's sitting like that but that wasn't messed with so I'll take it down what will someday be our driveway but right now that's our only access point so this is our road and if we follow this around see we've got signs <laughs> 
I guess thieves can't read. But I've taken you guys on a tour of this road all the way around the property before. But we walked on that little trail. It turned out to be a deer trail that we were following, uh, not knowing what they had done. And got all the way back up on the other side of the property and then walked the road all the way around to get back home. And we saw this. So what they had done is come here and you can see that that is too much or too big for a four-wheeler. They had a pickup truck and they backed it all the way down into that brush area and they carried that stuff through that crap. To this point now with all the trees it's hard to find a reference point but they had to go through the brush probably 200 feet carrying that generator to get it over to this point to get to a truck uh, to put it up in the truck with all the other stuff and then they were obviously getting the stove as well I'm probably going to get more they may have heard something or somebody coming by so they decided to take off but you can see where they pulled out and up through this way and Bobby told me I mean he didn't know this had happened and Friday when he got out here there was up at the corner of our road up another half a mile uh, Pulled off to the side was a pickup truck with a girl sitting in the passenger seat. And him and his boys ride their four-wheelers all around through here. And that truck sat there, he said, for about an hour that he knows of. Uh, with just the girl there. And then every now and then, if they drove by, there would be one of the guys there. So... Our theory, quite simply, is they parked up there and they would go into the wood part, into the brush, walk around looking for buildings to see if something was in them, you know, the barns, find a way to them, then go get their truck, back it up, get their haul, and take off and go find another place. So... I don't know. We've had this for two and a half years now we've been out here. And that's the first time, you know, anything's been messed with. Uh, but that's what they had to walk through. I wouldn't do it. But you follow this road around, our road here, follow that all the way around. And it goes down a hill, and it goes down to what they call Little Detroit. And evidently, that's a pretty bad heroin area down there. So these were probably drug addicts. They knew to stay in the shadows, stay in the woods. Because a lot of people have the CCTV cameras and stuff. And trail cams. So... They knew to avoid that. They didn't break into the house. Uh, all of my tools are in the house. My compressor, I mean, nail guns, uh, saws. They didn't take any of that stuff. Uh, didn't even break. I mean, they just had kicked the door in that would open up. They could get all that. But they're out in the open. So I assume that's why they left that alone. Um... Uh, and Bobby was home or was here. Uh, so <coughs> they may have been afraid he might have heard something. But yeah, they cleaned us out. Uh, got the 
generator, a weed eater, a brand new pull and chainsaw that I used one time. My first ever chainsaw. And uh, they got that. Uh, pisses me off. But what are you going to do? We're going to get uh, our own uh, camera system out here that records the DVD. I'm uh, bringing out some wire next week. Bobby's got 200 amp service over there at his property. And he's got 100 amp going from the pole back to his cabin. So he said it'd be no problem. I buy 250 feet of wire. We'll pull 50 amps out of his box, bring it over to our tiny house, and hook up power for right now so that I'll have 50 amp service inside. Uh, so we have lights and a refrigerator and things like that, you know, until I get all the septic in and get the house done completely and get the electric company out here. Uh, I'll just pay part of his electric bill every month. And electric's really cheap out here in the country, so we'll have power next weekend. We're going to hook all that up next Saturday. Uh, I'll buy the wire and bring it out and we're just going to run a gang box in there a four and just plug in you know what i need to play if i want to plug in an air conditioner if it's really hot i can uh but we'll have lights mini fridge microwave my coffee maker tv you know things like that that we can uh run anytime we want and also outdoor lights that might help deter them the next time. Uh, plus, we're going to uh, board up that door because we, we've never used it. It's just there. Uh, so now I'm going to board it up. And they know they can come in the bottom of the barn and go up the steps now. Uh, and it's dark going up to that door. And I'm hoping they come back. Because I'm going to drill about 60 three and a half inch screws through that door uh, the black screws they won't be able to see them and hopefully they'll get up to the top of the steps and try to shoulder that door open bust that door open to get the rest of the stuff and when they do and they get a half a dozen or so screws in their shoulder that might make them think twice about it uh, Talking to one of the neighbors down the hill here, he said, you know, these people come through, you know, they'll hit an area. Then they know those everybody's on alert now. So they leave this area, they go find someplace else to do, you know, the next day. And they'll be back here in a few months or a year. I mean, who knows? It happens out here. There's drugs out in the country. I don't care what people say. Uh... There's drugs out here. And, you know, this is not necessarily an uncommon occurrence. Uh, nonetheless, it pisses me off. Uh, I can't afford to go out and buy generators and inverters and chainsaws. Uh, and you can call the sheriff out here, but, you know, he'll be out the next day maybe. To uh, file a report, and that's all that's going to happen. But yep, St. Bernard Acres got hit, <laughs> and it sucks. And uh, now I got to save up some money, buy another generator, buy another chainsaw. I mean, I thought, okay, the generator's gone. I'll hook up my batteries. That's what I got them for. And I was going to put all my solar back up. And uh, they stole my inverter and some of the cabling. I mean, they don't even know what that shit is, I'm sure. Because uh, they didn't take the solar panels. Uh, and I had the batteries in the back of the truck. They'd been at work on a battery tender. So they didn't get to take those. Besides, I think they weigh more than the generator itself. But, that's our update, and 
Not a pleasant one this time. But it was nice to get to spend the weekend out here. Got all the electric work being done at the house uh, in Wheeling today. Alex and Nick are there with the guy doing all of it. So we just came and got out of the way. And uh, telling you what, it sucks as having no power, no generator or anything. Uh, you know, it, it, if you're trying to prepare for something and if you're curious how well prepared you are, turn your power off for a couple of days. Have nothing. Then you'll see how prepared you are. Because uh, we take it so much for granted. And sitting here last night with flashlights, that's all we had. Um, but like I said, next week, his pole and box is about 200 feet over. So I'm going to bring out a roll of wire. We're going to run a wire over, put me a four gang box plug right inside the house. And we can plug everything in. And I have lights. I'm going to put a couple outside lights with motion detectors on them. And plug those in, uh, just so that you know people realize some you know somebody's living out here that might help detour a little bit. And the cameras being posted around—they're great big cameras, so they will be seen. 